Kaluto? Mom, I'm fine. Accidentally fell. Kaluto got up silently and touched the big bag. The burning pain hit him, and his little face twisted in pain. What was that just now? Is it reading? Didn't the second brother have mediocre qualifications and left the family because of low self-esteem? Kaluto was full of doubts and had nowhere to vent. Across the lush forest, he couldn't help but take another look. The beautiful pupils reflected the arc light, and he didn't know what he was thinking. Kaluto, your brother is back, come over for dinner. At this moment, Kikio's voice came through the window into the garden. Kaluto came back to his senses, pulled his bangs to cover his big bag, and quickly said, Got it, mom. With that said, he walked into the restaurant with short legs. The huge restaurant is luxurious and magnificent, with an antique long table in the middle. Kikio and Kalua were already seated, Kaluto glanced at Kalua, pulled out the chair and sat opposite him. Start the meal. I don't know what's going on, after eating Roy's two meals, Kalua looked at the steak on the plate and didn't have any appetite at all. This is usually his favorite food, but today it tastes, tasteless. He simply dealt with two mouthfuls, pushed the chair and stood up, I'm full. Eh? Are you full after eating this much? Kalua, is today's dish unappetizing? Kikio stopped Kalua. No way. Kalua left the restaurant with his hands in his pockets without looking back. Mom, I'm going to see my brother. Kaluto jumped off the chair and followed. The two walked in the corridor one after the other, Kaluto quickened his pace and grabbed Kilua's clothes. Is something wrong? Kalua glanced back at him. Kaluto was silent for a few seconds, then summoned up his courage and said, Brother, what kind of person is the second brother? Ridiculous. Just a fat man. No, Kalua reacted, realized that Kaluto was referring to Roy, frowned at him and said, What are you asking him for? Just curious. Curiosity. Kalua gritted his teeth in hatred, that's a bitch. It's okay to inquire about him, let alone run to his house. Be careful that he sells you, and you still count the money for him. That's all. Saying that, Kalua slapped Kaluto's little hand away, cursing and disappearing from his sight. Kaluto was dumbfounded, is this still his cool and handsome brother Kalua? Why do you get anxious when you mention the second brother? Kaluto seemed to have been immobilized by someone, and froze in place, unable to recover for a long time. In the small courtyard, clear springs are gurgling. Send away Kalua, the stinky brother. Roy quickly took out the phone and returned a call to jump. SMI Marseille, is that teacher Tiano? Takahashi Nanako's voice came out. Sorry for making a joke with Mr. Takahashi, I hope you don't mind. Roy smiled and said. I don't know if you called this time because of the new issue? Not exactly, Takahashi Nanako organized her words and explained her purpose of coming. It turned out that the jump club wanted to join him in holding a signing event, in order to make Pirate King popular and fuel the fire. That's why Takahashi Nanako was sent to call and ask for Roy's opinion. Roy naturally has no objection, he also has a sales share, and the proportion is not low. The better Pirate King sells, the more he will earn. Then, Mr. Dao, let's make an agreement like this. On the first of next month, on behalf of the Jump Club, I welcome you to the city library. The call ended and Roy responded positively. Takahashi Nanako happily notified the editor-in-chief to announce the good news. There is a leading editorial agency like Jump Agency behind the fuel, coupled with the popularity of Pirate King. The news that Roy will come to the city library to hold an autograph session on the first of next month exploded immediately. From as big as the Republic of Batukia to as small as the streets and alleys, some rumors can be heard. There are still quite a few fans of V5 who, upon hearing the news, plan to go to Davia, the capital of the Republic of Batokia, at the end of the month to have a look at Mr. Tiano. It would be even better if you can buy his autographed book. Haha, <laughs> Shizuku, here comes the opportunity we were looking for. That guy Dao is going to report the autograph session. In an unfinished building on the outskirts of Davia, Uvijin also received the news, raised the new magazine in his hand, and threw it to Shizuku. What opportunity? I was surprised. Don't delay the task. On the side, Nobunaga, who was wiping his knife, glanced at Uvijin and then at Shizuku, who tasted like pantothenic acid. My good brother has changed, so I won't share with him the first time I have something, or I'll cut him off. It's nothing. Uvijin hooked Nobunaga's shoulder, and explained carelessly. Shizuku fell in love with a manga artist. I saw that the cartoons are not bad, so I thought I might as well tie him up and ask him to draw cartoons for us to read every day. 
It saves him one update a week, and the suffering of waiting. Shizuku nodded approvingly. Yes. How can it be updated once a week? It must be updated every day. If you can't finish painting, you won't be given food. Nobunaga. So goofy, but. I like it. Tell me. When I act, I will go. On the first of next month, the city library. When the time comes, let's make a big fuss, jahahaha. Uvijin put his hands on his hips and laughed wantonly. The sound wave spread, startling many birds away. Nobunaga gave him a disgusted look, wiped the knife, and made an IAI gesture. The eyes are reflected on the blade, reflecting a cold light. Is it the first of next month? It should be easy to bury, so don't go out. The young spiders are ready to move, and the funeral of blood and fire seems to be imminent. In the small courtyard. After Roy hung up Nanako's phone, he went to the wall, opened the calendar, and drew a circle on the first with a red pen. Based on the time agreed with Jump Agency, there are about 10 days left before the autograph session. It just so happened that the family's reserves were almost exhausted, so I decided to take advantage of the autograph session and go down the mountain to double the purchases. By the way, I went to the bank to check how much money was in the bank card given to him by the old man Maha. If it's less than eight figures, don't blame him, a grandson, for disrespecting the old and loving the young, pull his throat. Calculating silently in my heart, it took me ten minutes to make a plan. After confirming that there were no omissions, Roy then made himself a cup of coffee and returned to the study to continue to devote himself to the great cause of comics. While trying to complete the new issue within two days, temper your knowledge and arrogance, and gain more experience points. ZC, the liner rubbed against the drawing to make a soft sound. Once you do something, you must devote 100% to it. Thinking about the plot. Making a draft. Drawing the line. Storyboarding. Finalizing. Unknowingly, the afternoon time flies by. As the evening approached, Roy received the beep from the panel again. Reminder. Experience value plus one. Current cumulative experience value, five points. One o'clock in the morning, one o'clock in the afternoon, and a little more for knife practice at night. On average, it's three o'clock a day, which means. I'll be able to unlock the template again the day after tomorrow. Roy's blind eyes moved slightly, and there seemed to be a flash of light in them. Looking for, keep going at this pace, even before the autograph session, he was able to unlock the template to 50%. At that time, maybe you can break the limit of the human body, at least in a certain aspect, you can transcend the ordinary and become holy, and enter the realm of ghosts and gods. Ordinary people can't look directly at the gods, but if there is one thing that can break the limit, they will achieve a real leap in strength. For the time being, Roy still doesn't know which 50% Fujitora is best at, so he can only suppress his excitement and warn himself not to be impatient. After all, there will be bread, and it's almost ready to be baked. Just be patient. Hiss, huh, he took a deep breath, and then let it out slowly. Roy calmed down, raised his eyebrows, and looked out the window. At this time, a figure came up from the bottom of the mountain, stood still in front of the small courtyard, and knocked on his door. Knock knock, Master Roy. Indus is reporting to you. This man was wearing a decent suit, about thirty years old, with a beard, and a pair of gold-rimmed eyes on the bridge of his nose. It is the immediate boss of the courtyard guard Canalia, and the current chief steward of the Zoldic family, Indus. Why is he here? Roy leaned against the window, his pale pupils moved, he had no intention of opening the door, and said calmly. There is no master here, only Roy. Also, poor people like me don't have the strength to hire a housekeeper. Old man, do you think so? As soon as the words fell, Roy's knowledge and knowledge swept across the plane tree, and spread straight to the depths of the mountain forest, where he caught Geno's figure. Knowing that he was exposed, Gia Nuo sighed and said, I knew I couldn't hide it from you, kid. As he spoke, he walked out of the forest with his hands behind his back. Pointing at the parasol tree, he said to Roy, I thought there was no one in your room. I definitely need some help to help you with a little chore. When necessary, it can also protect your safety. I sent him here, I hope you can forgive Grandpa for neglecting you these years. So. You're doing it out of kindness. Why am I so unbelievable that the weasel pays New Year greetings to the chicken? After listening to Geno's remarks, Roy curled his lips and closed the window with a bang sound. He said coldly, where did it come from? I'm used to it alone. Don't make trouble for me, ridiculous, when he was young and most helpless, he was not given a housekeeper. Now that he is self-reliant and capable, he started to put someone over him, so he really doesn't treat himself as an outsider. Geno. 
The old face pulled suddenly, and blue veins appeared on his forehead. Little bastards don't know good people, when you encounter danger one day, you will know how important a powerful help is. Jia Nuo secretly told himself not to be angry, and shouted into the room without giving up. But he was almost hit on the head by a flying sock. Just dodging to dodge, I heard Roy sneer and said in the room, so that's why you have to accompany Silva every time you go out on missions. Oh, I see. So you know you can't do it. I'm worried that if I screw up, someone will come out and wipe your ass, right? Tisk. Don't worry, I'm not as weak as you, huh? Weak? Wipe your butt, right? I will smash your butt right now and tell you to wipe it well. Wu Tong, don't stop me, let me teach this ignorant brat a lesson. Geno couldn't bear it anymore, he was furious. Damn, he's lived for so many years, who wouldn't be intimidated after seeing him? Now even being pointed and scolded by someone, the grandson can bear it, and the grandfather can't bear it either. But. I didn't stop you, you don't just talk and don't practice, but do it. Wutong sighed silently, knowing that the old man lost face and was looking for a step down. Hurry up and hold him back, slightly surprised in my heart. Unexpectedly, Master Roy and Master Geno usually get along in such a way. It's really rare in my life. At least in the case of other young masters, Wutong has never seen anyone who dares to be so tough with him. In other words. Dot how dare he. Wutong turned his head to examine the cabin in front of him carefully, his eyes flickered, and suddenly remembered something. He can be regarded as the second oldest person in the Zoldic family after Zi Po, and he has heard of Roy and met him for a long time. All I know is that because of his natural blindness, his wife Kikyo has never liked him very much, and from time to time she would say in public that she was born disabled, let alone take him with her. So Roy grew up alone, alone, growing up in solitude. Later, things turned around. With the birth of Aluka, the head of the house, Silva, seemed to have moved, using Nanika's wish making ability to cure his blindness. I never thought about it, but was rejected by Roy, who was still a child at the time. The reason he gave was, every gift of fate has a price marked in the dark. If my younger brother needs to take risks to save my eyes, then I am willing to be blind for the rest of my life. Wutong was at the scene at the time. After hearing these words, there was a lot of shock in my heart, which still lingers until now, and the impression is extremely deep. But what I didn't expect was that ten years had passed in the blink of an eye, and the taciturn, withdrawn and mediocre young master had grown up. However, he was instructed by Jia Nuo by chance to come to serve him. I have to say that the twists and turns of fate are truly miraculous. It's just a pity. Most things haven't changed, except, Master has changed. He seems to be getting more and more withdrawn. With a sigh, Wutong restrained his thoughts and helped Jia Nuo calm down, thought for a while and said to Jia Nuo, Master calm down. Perhaps let me try. Jia Nuo blew his beard and stared, and said nothing which was a tacit consent. Wutong nodded at him, adjusted his tuxedo, and shouted into the room, Master Roy. I said that there is no Master Roy here, only Roy. Roy interrupted him impatiently. Okay Roy. Wutong pushed the glasses on the bridge of his nose, and said in a deep voice, the order of the patriarch is the mission of our housekeeper. We can't tolerate our rejection. So Roy, I'd like to ask you for a trial period. Anytime. Anywhere during the probationary period, as long as you feel unsatisfied, you can fire me. Is this a good way? Why didn't I think of it? Geno's eyes lit up. With the probationary period as a buffer, Wutong's approach is undoubtedly more gentle. If you think about it, it won't be too preconceived, so as to arouse Roy's rebellious psychology and arouse his disgust. No. Before Geno could reflect for three seconds, reality suddenly picked up the RPG, and a rocket blasted him to pieces. The dog skin plaster sticks on, isn't it endless? Roy pushed open the window, stared at Wutong, and said annoyedly. Are you confident, or do you think you are stronger than the old man Geno? I'm not weak. I repeat. I can't hear this. Geno was furious again, almost going crazy. When Wu Tong saw it, his eyelids twitched, he quickly puffed up his chest, stepped forward and said, I don't think I'm weak. Master Roy, if you don't believe me, you can test it yourself. He is not a clay figurine, and he has three points of anger. Not to mention his strength. Among all the housekeepers in the Zoldic family, except for Zi Po Nian, his Nen is the strongest. In the original book, he could even make two moves with a certain fruit farmer. Pity. Not enough to watch. As a result, he was beheaded by the fruit farmer in a sneak attack, and died. That's right. 
If the flies don't slap them to death, they'll always be buzzing. Roy nodded approvingly. A pair of blind eyes turned and fixed on Wutong, and said lightly, One move. I only make one move. If you can take it, from now on, my small courtyard will not be fortified against you. If you can't catch it, don't blame me for not giving you a chance to be a cow or a horse. Alas, people are either on the way to being cheap, or they are on the road to being cheap. Be a bull and a horse on the pole, worthy of being the loyal dog of the Zoldic family. However, a trick? Hey, stop looking down on people. Brat, fighting is not just a game, it's not as simple as you think. Geno laughed angrily at Roy's outrageous words, looked at him coldly and said, I admit that you are very strong, and you change every day. Even the old man frightens me sometimes. But if you think you can defeat Wutong with one move by relying on Yuan, then I advise you to simply admit defeat. Jianuo knew Wutong's strength, it wasn't top notch but it wasn't bad either. A hand of transmuters coins is superbly played, and other casual Nen players are not his opponents at all. What's more, he passed the selection test of the Zoldic family early. For reference, when Canalia was 10 years old, she could hit a hundred adult men with a cane. Wutong would only be stronger than her at that age. Wutong put out all your strength and teach this brat a good lesson. Jeno put his hands on his hips and gave the order with a straight face. Wutong nodded, but did not speak, his motto is to be cautious in his words, and his life creed is to reach the peak. Since he was ten years old, he was able to climb from the intern housekeeper to the chief housekeeper step by step, not because of self-seeking, but because of his real strength. If Roy really thinks he can beat him with one move, that Indus can only say, It is daytime, young master, don't daydream. Master Roy, please act. Wutong immediately relaxed his muscles and bones, and put on a defensive posture. In an instant, his thoughts burst out. He is a Nen from Transmuter, and he has an extraordinary temperament. He is an unknown number of blocks away from ordinary Nen. But it's only because of his strength. Roy's blind eyes moved, and he saw through him with just one glance. Name Indus. Bone Age. 31. Physique, 50. Normal person 10. Speed, 60. Normal person 10. Strength, 77. Normal person 10. Air capacity, 110. Normal person 10. Nen, transmuter. On the whole, it is comparable to Kalua. Even when Kalua turns on aura nodes in the sky arena and learns to read, he may not be an opponent. Such an opponent. Roy is really not interested. Can't even look at it. Stretch out your right hand at will, and simply slap him at the position where he is standing. Suddenly, a gravitational halo emerged, covering Wutong's body with a hood, without giving him a chance to react, and directly crushed him to the ground. Boom, superhuman gravity fruit shows power, 50 times gravity falls crazy. The ground was actually centered on the phoenix tree, spreading rapidly in the shape of a spider web, forming a large ring-shaped pit with a radius of 10 meters in an instant. And without any sign of stopping, they attacked Geno directly. Damn it. Jia Nuo was startled, and dodged away, not forgetting to remind Wu Tong. Full concentration, use thoughts to strengthen the body. The phoenix tree was fixed at the bottom of the pit in a large font, and there was unspeakable suffering. At that moment just now. He felt as if he was hit on the head by a big mountain falling from the sky, and he almost broke into meat sauce. Now, after receiving Geno's reminder, he roared, tried to mobilize Nen, stood up with force, but was wiped out completely by the purple thunderbolt suddenly drilled out of the gravitational beam of light. Can't move. Can only be slaughtered by Roy like a salted fish. It's useless. Roy glanced blankly at Wutong who was still trying to struggle, and said lightly, if you don't want to live on a ventilator for the rest of your life. I advise you to give up. This sounded familiar, as if I had just heard it. Geno suddenly remembered, as if he had said something similar to Roy just now. An old face suddenly turned red, he gritted his teeth and stared at Roy and said, Okay, stop it. This old man really didn't expect you to be a Dunyan master. When Jia Nuo said this, his eyes were straightened, and his sore old teeth were almost shattered. He sees clearly. In the gravitational beam of light, those crackling purple thunderbolts shattered Wutong's thoughts lightly, what else could it be except thoughts? And, Exorcist, an extremely rare Nen who only exists in legends. One out of ten million people may not be able to produce one. Unexpectedly, the grandson he had been neglecting would be one of them. I can only say, Roy, hide so deeply, so terrifying. Receive, now that the goal has been achieved, the other party has already admitted defeat. 
Roy raised his hand lightly, and immediately put away his ability. He is not a pervert, nor does he have a penchant for torturing ants. Hiss. The big mountain, pressing on his body suddenly disappeared, and Watong finally took a breath and struggled to climb out from the bottom of the pit. Regardless of the mess on his body, facing Roy, he bowed and lowered his head. Thank you, young master, for saving my life. Indus admit defeat. According to the agreement, wherever the young master is, I will take the initiative to stay away. That's not necessary. Roy waved his hand. What he wanted was to have clean ears, but he didn't say he wanted to hide from the world. What's more, this matter has nothing to do with the other party from the beginning to the end, and he was forced to suffer an innocent disaster. Young master is magnanimous. Watong took a deep breath, bowed again to thank him, straightened his body, and limped down the mountain. When he came here, he never thought that he would go home. Just like he never thought that he would lose just now. He couldn't even catch one move from Master Roy, he had to go back and calm down. Master, I've let you down. I'll wait for your punishment at the General Affairs Department. When passing by Geno, Watong paused and nodded to Geno. Without looking back, he disappeared into the forest. The mountain wind whimpers, the shadows of the trees dance. Geno looked back at the back of his leaving in a bleak manner, his lips moved, but he didn't say anything in the end. With hands behind his back, he followed. Right now, he couldn't stay here anymore. Having done something bad with good intentions, Geno began to reflect on whether it was his fault. I plan to go to the old man for advice. In addition, Roy turned out to be the legendary nemesis. This matter needs to be reported to Maha urgently. I believe the old man will be surprised when he hears it. Only, you can come and leave whenever you want, you really treat my place as a hotel, don't you? Before Geno could move his feet, Roy's leisurely voice came out, calling him to stop. When Geno heard this, he stopped and turned around, facing Roy's pale eyes, squinted and said. Why, are you planning to keep me here for dinner? At that time, the sky was getting late, the sun was rising, and it was so beautiful. Geno looked at Roy and said, if you have this wish, I will reluctantly agree to it. Hey, do you want to eat? Grandpa will make it for you on the spot. Roy smiled coldly, and said with a straight face, stop messing with me. Old man, don't dig your eyes and throw them away. Look at what you made in front of my door, it looks like a dog ate it. Ten million, transfer the money immediately. I just turned a blind eye and squeezed my nose to admit it. The corner of Geno's mouth twitched, and he glanced at the big hole made by Roy, and turned red, you made the hole yourself. Do you really think I'm as blind as you? It's you who brought it here, Roy said blankly. Gia Nuo was furious. I brought him here, but didn't I ask you to do it? Aren't you playing tricks on the sidelines? Roy snorted. I played tricks? Geno pointed at his nose and completely broke his defense. I'm not doing it for you. Okay. Roy said happily, for me, transfer the money to me now. For the sake of your old arms and legs, you won't have to worry about repairing the ground. I'm considerate enough. You. Geno pointed at Roy, mad with anger, and it took him a long time to recover, and he gritted his teeth and said, I won't give it. You can get it yourself if you have the ability. Mada, the little bastard has gone against the sky. Do you really think that you can be lawless because you are a teacher of eliminating thoughts? Grandpa will teach you how to be a man today. Geno was determined to teach Roy a lesson, so he rolled up his sleeves. When Roy saw this, he had already captured his movements with knowledge and knowledge, and turned his head and shouted at an old man on the rocking chair. Maha, your grandson is going to beat me up. Let me tell you, if I lose a single hair today. In the future, don't even think about watching, Pirate King, again. It turned out that Maha Zoldik came to the courtyard without knowing when. The old man was lying on the rocking chair watching the play, witnessed the whole process, and was shaking vigorously, when suddenly he was called. Reluctantly, with his hands behind his back, he stood up, glanced at Roy with resentment, sighed and said to Geno, forget it, forget it. I'm still angry with a child at an old age. Be obedient and transfer the money to him. Grandpa. Gia Nuo's old face swelled into a liver color. Unexpectedly, Ma Ha was in Roy's room, and he felt aggrieved as if he had eaten a fly, and he felt an indescribable shock. You'll spoil him like this. Geno didn't give up. Maha immediately pulled his face, glared at Gianuo and said, Is it your face that matters, or my fun? Geno. Defeat. Don't look at Maha as if he's not stingy. But what he said is true, the whole Zoldic family tied together is not as important as Maha alone. Because, without him, there are Zoldikes, because of him, 
Zoldyck is the world's number one killer family. Himaha is the white jade pillar of Zoldyck's family, which never grows old. Grandson knows. Geno smashed his teeth and swallowed, took out his mobile phone and called the bank. A minute later, Roy's cell phone rang. Drip. Your account with the end number 7086 has transferred a sum of 10 million kata in cash. Please check. Good. Thank you Grandpa Gia Nuo for the gift. After receiving the transfer, Roy winked at Geno in a happy mood. The window was closed again with a bang, leaving Geno standing alone in the cool breeze. The vertical is shapeless. When the kid is proud, he goes wild. Are you thankful? You are yin and yang. The old man thought he fed the dog out of good intentions. Geno was furious, and with Maha around, he just couldn't get angry. After reacting, he slapped his mouth angrily, and cursed. If he is a dog, then I will become an old dog. Bad luck. Saying that, Geno narrowed his eyes and looked at the small courtyard with closed doors and windows, for a long time. With a cold snort, he left with his hands behind his back. Whoever likes to stay in this ghost place will stay there, anyway, he can't stay anymore. Before leaving, I still didn't forget to spit at the circular pit. Anyway, it cost him 10 million nuns, how could he be angry with him if he didn't save anything? Even if it's just disgusting that kid. Geno was thinking secretly, the wind was blowing under his feet, he passed the clear spring, and walked towards the castle. At this time, the sky was gradually darkening, and the whole Zoldic manor was lit with lights. The General Affairs Department on the hillside of Kukulu Mountain, also known as the General Manager's Office, is also brightly lit at this moment, illuminating a mountain forest. Quack, quack, occasionally a few crows fly by. Before it was completely dark. Canalia, who was stationed in the courtyard, returned from her duty report and was called to the meeting room immediately. With fiery red disheveled braids on her head, she thought it was the manager, Watong, who wanted to summon her alone. Unexpectedly, when she pushed open the door of the meeting room with a trembling heart, she saw all the servants in the Zoldic family except the housekeeper who was on the job, she was stunned, bent down quickly, and trotted to the meeting table sit down at the end. SMI Masse, I'm late. The long conference table was full of people. Connelia's half of her butt was next to the chair, and she didn't dare to sit still. She is just a trainee housekeeper and has not yet become a full-time member. She is afraid that she will make a mistake and be expelled by the family. She didn't want to go back to that damn meteor street. However, there seems to be something wrong with the atmosphere today. Canalia lowered her eyes, observed the situation, and looked carefully. When her eyes touched the phoenix tree at the top of the conference table, her big eyes suddenly widened and she quickly reached out to cover her mouth to prevent herself from screaming out of shock. Boss. Dot why did you suddenly become like this? No wonder Canalia was surprised. At this time, Watong was on a drip and wrapped in bandages, like a dying mummy. If it weren't for the pair of gold-rimmed glasses on the bridge of his nose, it symbolized his identity. Few would recognize him as the apex of the Zoldyke's servant's pyramid, the steward Sycamore. Ahem, everyone is here, let's start the meeting. Watong's hoarse voice came out. Every word is extremely difficult, he finally underestimated Roy's strength. The palm that fell during the day directly broke several of his ribs. Now that he is still sitting instead of lying down, it is enough to say that he is amazing. But. The young master is still merciful. This is why Watong thanked Roy at the time. He could feel that that light palm was not Roy's real strength. At that time, if he really chose to be serious. So. Zoldyke's house no longer has a sycamore, but a dead sycamore. Talk about something. Wu Tong withdrew his thoughts and glanced around, passing over the servants one by one, all of them were old faces who had worked together for many years. There are those who serve Gino. Dot the ones who serve Silva. Dot and the ones who follow Kikio and Kaluto. Even a trainee housekeeper like Canalia has been in Zoldyke's house for a long time. Not to mention guarding the gate of the Zoldyk family for 20 or 30 years. Indus took a deep breath. I announce that I am resigning from my position as the head of the Zoldyke's house effective tomorrow. No longer in any position with the Zoldyke's. The promises made must be fulfilled, whether it is to Roy or to Geno. He's let Zoldyke down after all. He has no qualifications and no face to hang on to the position of steward. This is also the decision he made after pondering for a long time after he came back. However, for all the butlers in the Zoldyke family, this decision is undoubtedly a blockbuster. It exploded in the conference room. Canalia, Gia Bu Gia. Everyone was taken aback for a moment, and then they realized that they looked at each other, and looked at each other. 
Big event. The manager resigned. Gia Bu Gia has served the Zoldic family for 20 or 30 years, and this is the first time he has seen such a situation. You know, they are housekeepers and servants of the Zoldic family in name, but the salary they actually receive is at the level of the president, boss, and CEO in the entire Republic of Batokia. Therefore, you will resign when your brain is kicked by a donkey. Unless, he's hated the master of the Zoldikes and has to resign. The well-aged Gia Bujia noticed Wutong's injuries, Hao Ran realized something, and then saw that everyone was looking at him intentionally or unconsciously. He coughed lightly, and asked on behalf of all the housekeepers, Wutong, can you tell me the reason? Impossible. Indus flatly refused, it was related to Roy Gia Nuo, he still abided by his duties as a housekeeper and absolutely did not criticize the master. Why? A young man couldn't help but ask. There's no reason. Wu Tong's eyes were determined, and he kept his mouth shut. At this time, the reason is simple, he offended Master Roy. That injury was also caused by Master Roy. Squeak, the office door was suddenly pushed open. The sound reaches everyone. An old woman with pink twin ponytails walked in with a blank expression. The moment he saw her, the conference room fell silent. Everyone stood up at the same time as if rehearsed in advance, saluted and said hello to her, including Wutong. Why are you here? Wutong held on to the table and held on, looking at Ziponian with a wry smile. The oldest butler in the history of the Zoldic family is now directly under the current head of the house, Silva. Although she is a woman, but in terms of momentum, there is no man in the entire conference room who can overwhelm her. Coupled with her burly figure shoulder to shoulder, just standing there will bring unparalleled pressure to people. HMPH, if I don't come again, I'm afraid I won't be able to see you, Wu Tong. Zi Po Nian glanced at Wu Tong, and said softly, everyone sit down. After that, no matter how hot everyone's eyes were, he went straight to Canalia, pulled a chair over, and sat down at the other end of the long conference table. On the side, Canalia swallowed a mouthful of saliva, and quietly looked at this living fossil in the servant world from the corner of her eye. A name just mentioned by the other party caught her attention. Master Roy? He injured Butler Wutong? How come? He is obviously such a gentle person. Canalia suddenly thought of that afternoon, it was Master Roy who was holding a cane in one hand and a plastic bag in the other, and he saw what was on her mind at a glance. Mentioned her a word. Unexpectedly, time flies, and not long after, I heard his name again. But in the meeting room, Wutong, I'm here, you should know what it means. After sitting down, Ziponian went straight to the topic, looked deeply at Wutong and said, the head of the family has ordered that you are not allowed to resign as the manager. If you have any objections, wait for the patriarch to come back and go find him yourself. Wutong showed a look of shame, and met Zi Ponian's unquestionable gaze head on, so he nodded. Seeing this, Zi Ponian breathed a sigh of relief, knocked on the conference table, motioned for everyone to look over, and said in a deep voice, then. Let's talk about the second thing. Patriarch's order. From now on, Everyone who meets Master Roy must treat him as the Patriarch. Seeing him is like seeing the Patriarch, and you must not offend him. As for the consequences of the offense, Zipo Nian didn't say anything, because everyone, including Kanalia and Jia Bu Jia, were all dumbfounded after receiving the order. What is, seeing him is like seeing the head of the family? No. Didn't everyone say that Master Roy is not well received by the family? It is rumored that he has mediocre aptitude. He was congenitally blind from birth. Since he was a child, he was withdrawn and didn't like to communicate with others. When he grew up, he even lived in a corner, planning to be self-reliant, and wanted to leave the Zoldic family. Why did he suddenly, after a sudden change, be able to sit up on an equal footing with the patriarch? This is too unbelievable. A restlessness can be clearly felt in the quiet conference room. No one dared to comment on the patriarch, but we could see the word, sigh, on everyone's face. Except Zippo Nian and Wutong. Indus was not surprised by this order, and presumptuously said, if he were Silva, he would issue this order without hesitation. There is no other reason, Roy is too strong, it's so strong that you can shoot him to death, and it's real. Indus, tell me about it yourself. Zippo Nian didn't explain too much. Indus smiled bitterly. Yes. Tell the whole story of his battle with Roy in detail. I didn't say anything about the mode of getting along with Geno and Roy, to your mother. Finally concluded. In short, I still failed to make a move under Master Roy. In the end, you also saw it. Wutong pointed to the three layers of bandages wrapped around his body, because the action involved the injury, 
he groaned in pain, and said with difficulty. This is the result of Master Roy being merciful and not being serious. Otherwise, Wutong didn't go on, but everyone understood, I'm afraid there will be no such person as Wutong in this world. Silence. The already quiet conference room became even more silent. Only the sound of swallowing saliva and gasping for air can be heard. Typically, less is more. What Wutong said was simple, but everyone seemed to be able to personally feel the despair of being slapped into the ground by Master Roy's palm. Canalia was dazed in a daze, and she couldn't connect the powerful young master that Wutong was talking about with the gentle young master in the afternoon. She lowered her eyes so that no one could see her small mouth, which was too surprised to close. A person hid in a corner and silently digested. Ah, ah. if the words were not spoken by Wutong Butler himself. Old man, I still don't believe. Now it seems that the Zoldic family has a successor. With a sigh of emotion, Jia Bujia broke the silence with his words. Reminiscent of the blind young master who would greet him with a smile every time he came back from the mountain. If the other party is really not careful, they will do shocking things. It really is nothing but a blockbuster. Now you know. I don't need to emphasize what to do when I see Master Roy in the future. The order has already been issued. Zi Po Nian glanced at everyone, and every housekeeper who looked at her lowered her head. What are you kidding? Didn't you see what the parasol tree has become? If you bump into Roy, it's better to kill yourself, maybe you can leave a whole body. Understood. Everyone said in unison. In that case, the meeting is over. Zi Po Nian has always been vigorous and resolute. With a clap of hands, the meeting was declared over, and everyone filed out one after another. Soon, the huge meeting room was empty, only Wutong was left alone. Zi Po Nian, Master Jianuo and Master Roy. Indus hesitated to speak. Still worrying about Jano and Roy. One move was defeated by Roy, he knew that he had no face to stay in the small courtyard, and the follow-up situation. He didn't know yet. Zi Po Nian gave him a sideways glance, and interrupted him with his hands. You're already in this horrible state, and you still have the ability to care about others. Who do you think sent me here? The master is not free, and he can't spare to punish you, if you feel uncomfortable. Just take care of your injury with peace of mind, and serve the family wholeheartedly in the future. I will. Wutong said with firm eyes, please tell the master for me. I will redouble my training from today, and I will never let him down again in the future. Zi Po Nian sighed. I hope so. But ah. The master doesn't have the time to care about you, he probably still has a headache. Zi Ponian turned her head and looked out the window. The Zoldic family castle was brightly lit, and some dull footsteps could be heard faintly. At that time, the moon was in the sky. After returning from Roy's small courtyard, Geno didn't even eat dinner, went straight back to his room, and fell asleep. But. Can't sleep anyway. After turning over and sitting up, I walked around the room with my hands behind my back, the more I thought about it, the more angry I became. His grandma. That kid is simply out of character with him, and his fate is incompatible. You can't get along well, right? No, I have to ask the old man. Why can he go in and out of Roy's house openly, chatting and spanking with him, but I can't? The problem can't be all on me, can it? There is also the old man. Obvious preference, if this continues, he will teach the children badly. Geno frowned, opened the door, and came to Maha's hut full of anger. The little old man was enjoying himself lying on the rocking chair and watching cartoons, not to mention how comfortable he was. Seeing Geno enter the room, he didn't blink his eyelids, as if he knew in advance that he would come to find him. He said slowly, You disturb my sleep in the middle of the night, Jianuo, you are not filial. Geno's face turned black. Pack, if you don't close the door when you sleep, isn't that waiting for him to come? Grandpa, you know I'm coming, so don't make fun of me. Geno smiled wryly, as you can see today, that kid Roy has too much opinion of me. Even if I wanted to ease the relationship with him, I was powerless. Is not that right? Ten million people are digging, digging, searching, searching and refusing to pay. Who is powerless if you are not powerless? The corner of Maha's mouth twitched, and he said without looking back, Geno, do you know where your biggest problem is? Um? Geno pricked up his ears, waiting for the next sentence. Maha turned over, looked at him meaningfully and said, you are too embarrassing. You have to learn from my grandpa in this respect, take his, eat his, wear his, use his, just follow along shamelessly. Anyway, he can't beat you, what do you say you are afraid of? Geno. True words, but. 
Why do I feel that you are hurting me, old man? Be honest. Did you pay Roy? Jia Nuo stared at Maha suspiciously. Otherwise, even if he knows that he can't beat you with his temper, he will probably fight you to the death. Fart. Who are you slandering? Maha was angry. Did I give money? I just temporarily deposited part of the savings with my lovely great great grandson. What's the matter? Can't you? Geno. What's the difference between this TM? Aren't you still spending money to bribe him? Geno was speechless. His old teeth were sore, he took a deep breath and said, You won't give him all your savings, will you? You think I'm stupid? Maha gave Jia Nuo a blank look. No, I just gave him a hundred years of interest. What? One hundred years? How many hundred years do you have in total? Geno is dumbfounded. Good guy co author when I was young, I asked you for a dollar to buy ice cream and you didn't even give it to me, but now it's a good thing, you just gave up one third of that brat's property. Mada, the co author is your grandson, so I am not? You ultimate lick dog. I despise you. Jia Nuo was about to die of anger, but he couldn't have an attack. Don't say if you can't beat it, just say that it is Maha's money, and he can distribute it as he likes, and it's not up to his grandchildren to dictate here. But, Grandpa, people's hearts are not enough. You gave him money this time, next time, next time, next time? Jia Nuo almost spit out his spittle. You can't spend money to buy that brat every time, can you? What do you do when you run out of money? Maintaining the family relationship depends on money. When did the Zoldic family become so realistic? Old man, be careful not to keep it in the evening, it's a bad family tradition. What's wrong? Without money, he doesn't recognize me as a great grandfather. Maha said impatiently. Didn't I tell you? If you have no money, use your fists to subdue him. Then what if we can't beat it? Geno added. How can you not beat it? Maha looked at Geno with eyes like an idiot. You don't think everyone is as weak as you, do you? No way? Why did Mata's words sound so familiar? This. Dot not. Like that little bastard Roy said something similar. P.A.G. Something seemed to be broken. Geno clutched his chest. Oh, it turned out to be his Dao heart. He stood there blankly, his body stiff, as if he had a cerebral infarction, he moved his mouth and wanted to say something, but he couldn't utter a single word. Seeing this, Maha picked his nostrils, suddenly remembered something, and said, You reminded me of this. Roy has improved a little bit recently. It seems that it won't be long before I can catch up with you. Tisk, Geno, you still need to work harder. You said that you, a grandfather, can't beat your grandson, how embarrassing it is to spread. No way, old man, the reputation I managed to earn will be ruined by you. Maha babbles. Said a lot. However, Geno couldn't hear anything in the end. His hands and feet were cold, his eyes were dull, and there was only one thought in his mind at this moment. Damn it, I will be a dog when I come to this house again. I said if it is possible, you will have such a day. At this moment, Geno suddenly interrupted Maha. You said it all, Roy is improving very quickly. If one day surpasses you, what will you do then? Maha was stunned. Impossible, absolutely impossible. Just because that kid Roy wants to win him? Dream. He is Maha Zoldic, the real number one killer in the world. Even if Netero comes, you may not be able to get anything good. How could he lose? That's not necessarily true. Geno looked at Maha meaningfully and said, Grandpa, there are no absolutes in this world. Don't be afraid of 10,000, just in case. That's all. Grandson won't disturb your old rest. Good night. Saying that, Geno turned and left the hut without staying for a moment, and disappeared from Maha's sight in an instant. The little old man sent him away, and he didn't come back to his senses for a long time. Suddenly I shivered, and I don't know what terrible thing I thought of. The whole person has no sleepiness at all. For a while, the rocking chair stopped rocking, and the cartoons didn't smell good anymore. Mouth intermittently. No way. Did not fall asleep all night. Dare to love, it turns out that insomnia will really transfer. Small courtyard. In the morning, there is a cool breeze and the air is fresh. Roy scrambled out of bed before the sun had fully risen. He picked up the stick knife, stood in the courtyard and began to practice the knife. After two consecutive days of catching up with the progress of the manga, my spirits are really tight, and I just need some exercise to relax my muscles and bones. By the way, liver experience, one two three four. The stick knife is swung, the sweat is splashed. The blind boy is dressed in the morning glow, swinging a knife towards the sky, forming a beautiful picture scroll. 
Of course, it would be even more beautiful if there wasn't a bad old man peeping from the side. I said what's the matter with you? It's okay. Why are you staring at me all the time? Roy paused in his hands, threw his stick and knife to the ground, glared at Maha angrily and said, when you draw manga, you can forget about it. You can also watch sword practice, you can also watch cooking. Does it mean that you have to squat next to me and watch after I take a shit? For several days in a row, I don't know what kind of cramps this old man Maha has, so I like to squat behind him and watch. When I asked, I still didn't speak, like a crazy person. There is no one else. Forget it. You can do whatever you like. I have to catch up on the questionnaire today, so I don't have time to waste time with you. Roy left a sentence and walked straight to the study. Takahashi Nanako collected some readers' questions, sorted them out, and sent them to him. He just took advantage of this time to look at these questions, and waited until the day of the autograph session to answer them for readers. Wow. Roy flipped through the questionnaire, looking at each item. Not surprisingly, Maha appeared behind him. When I saw a reader asked a question about the four emperors' white beard, Maha finally broke his damned silence and suddenly asked Roy, Roy, what do you think of Whitebeard? What do you think? I am blind. How can I see? Roy turned his head, his pale eyes stared straight at Maha. Said sarcastically, finally willing to speak? I thought you were suddenly dumb. Answer my question. Maha seemed concerned about Whitebeard. However, he is just an old pirate in the comics, what should he care about? Roy gave Maha a sideways look, and asked curiously, why are you asking him? Same sickness and pity for each other. Maha's heart skipped a beat, and Roy inadvertently poked his heart. He just wanted to test Roy's attitude towards him through the character, White Beard. Gianuo's words are still vivid in his memory. If he really can't beat this kid one day, he won't turn his face and deny him in an instant, right? After all, when I was young, I didn't pay much attention to this child, let alone help him. It doesn't count. Maha pretended to be calm and said, Once you get old, you will easily hurt the spring and the autumn. I think this white beard is the oldest among the four emperors, and I'm somewhat curious about his later life. Are you curious about white beard's evening scene, or your own evening scene? Roy sneered and said, If you want to know, I'll tell you. Maha didn't speak, but listened intently. Seeing Roy recalling, One piece, he said leisurely, In my plan, the character Whitebeard has been ups and downs throughout his life, with glories and troughs. The evening scene is not very good, it can even be said to be quite miserable. When Maha heard this, he couldn't help but thumped, and asked tentatively, Didn't you say that he has taken in many sons? Among his many sons, there is no one who is filial to him. Filial piety? Don't you find it ridiculous to talk about filial piety with pirates? Roy sneered. Whitebeard has been pursuing the word, home, all his life. Accepting so many sons is also to form a everyone. But what he didn't expect was that he became a son, lost a son, and died in the hands of his son in the end. It's a pity. Dead at the hands of his son? Maha's breath was stagnant. Compare. Myself equals Whitebeard. Roy equals Whitebeard's son. Sure enough. You kid has a rebellious brain, and you are destined to rebel in the future, right? Maha's face darkened, he suppressed the anger in his heart, and asked in a muffled voice, how did you die? That was not ordinary. Roy recalled the scene of the war on the top, and sighed. First he was forced to go out of the mountain by his son. Then he was stabbed in the back by his own son, and he stabbed him hard. Even if he died in the end, he couldn't rest in peace. His son, whipped the corpse, and stole his abilities. Pitiful. Maha. His face turned from black to white, and he shivered uncontrollably. Things like, whip corpses, have been pulled out. Roy is really. Lawless, he doesn't see anyone in his eyes. Hey, can't we give him a good ending? Maha looked at Roy seriously and said, The family is harmonious, the father is kind and the son is filial, isn't that good? There's no need to be so bitter and bitter. Who will see the happy ending? Roy rolled his eyes. Although the eyeballs were completely white, it was the same as not rolling, but Maha still saw the sarcasm in it. True art is tragedy. It's just to stab readers' hearts with a knife. Only by making them hurt can they remember deeply, and comics can sell well. A layman like you won't understand. I don't understand. But Roy, it seems that my great-grandfather told you not to underestimate the elderly. I'm sure that even if Whitebeard dies, few of his sons can reach the height he had in his lifetime. Maha looked at Roy firmly. Roy was silent, as Maha said, no one can surpass Whitebeard, whether it is Ace, Marco, 
Vista or anyone else. The only black beard is only on the same level as him. So, your father is your father after all. Maha patted Roy on the shoulder, and said earnestly, Boy, it is not an easy thing to surpass my great-grandpa. You, at least you have to practice for another few decades. Good guy. I'm cooperating with you to go around here, it's peeping, and it's using things to describe others, are you pointing at me? Roy suddenly realized, a black line appeared on his forehead. He sneered. Is it difficult to surpass you? Old man, it's right for me to say this. Don't rely on the old to sell the old, and underestimate the young. As he said that, Roy glanced at the panel. Over the past few days, the experience points have reached 10 points. It's better to simply use it today. Panel, give me some points. Yes. Received Roy's order. The panel immediately changed, and the experience value returned to zero. Template, Fujitora's current unlocking progress jumped from 30% to 40% in an instant. At this moment, Roy seemed to see the phantom of Fujitora again. He was still wearing the same familiar attire. A purple kimono, a general's cloak with the word, justice, printed on it, clogs on his feet, a staff knife in his hand, and his eyes closed all year round, unwilling to see the ugliness of this world. Junior, has anyone ever told you that gravity can also be reversed? Fujitora spoke suddenly, but before the sound reached Roy's ears, the stick knife in his hand suddenly came out of his body, and he slashed horizontally. The gravity as heavy as a mountain actually violates the laws of physics, it rotates 90 degrees strangely, and slashes out horizontally with the slash. This knife, Roy knew, it is one of the stunts that Fujitora is famous for, Gravity Knife Tiger. In the past, he had used this trick when he ran into Sabo, the second in command of the Revolutionary Army, in Dress Rosa. At that time, when the knife came out, the world couldn't help but change its color. If it wasn't for Sabo's ability to hide fast enough, his own strength is strong enough, plus the fact that he just ate the Shao Shao fruit and his strength increased greatly. Would he still be able to avoid the knife? You may not know if you have been severely injured. A very powerful move. Thank you, senior, for your guidance. To get Fujitora to demonstrate in person, Roy is probably the only person in this world. He calmed down and concentrated on absorbing the experience of this move. After it is fully digested, folding his hands, he bowed to Fujitora. Inheriting his learning, he should live up to his name. You deserve it. Fujitora smiled sarcastically, looked at this young man who had a pair of blind eyes like himself, and his eyes were not without appreciation. Ohm, at this moment, ripples appeared in the void. The panel finally stopped beating. Fujitora seemed to realize that it was time to say goodbye, so he waved his hand at Roy, his figure faded away and vanished into nothingness. And with his disappearance, a huge amount of cultivation experience and life energy poured out. A brain poured into Roy's body. Immediately, Roy's breath changed. The little old man had just been cued by Roy's phrase, don't underestimate young people, and he hadn't had time to complain about the kid's rampant behavior. In the blink of an eye, he was staggered by Roy's explosive momentum and almost fell to the ground. Uncommonly swearing. It's Netero's day, is it June's day for you kid? Change it if you say it. Maha hurriedly stabilized his body, looked at Roy in shock, and saw him. Thick domineering entwined all over his body, he frowned, closed his eyes tightly, and endured the severe pain caused by the sudden increase in physique. The body keeps making the sound of frying beans, which is the result of the bone density increasing again, the muscles are overwhelmed, and they are constantly splitting and reorganizing. Hila, the short sleeve on Roy's body was stretched to the point of tearing, exposing Roy's beautiful and tight abdominal muscles. This kid has grown a lot. Maha squinted his eyes, seeing clearly. Roy's physical strength, whether it is strength, speed or reaction ability, has improved significantly compared to a minute ago. Yes. Just one minute. Maha's eyelids twitched, this scene seemed familiar to him. If you say get stronger, you will become stronger immediately. Adding the last time, this seems to be the third time. Calculated in this way, he became stronger three times in less than a month. It is not an ordinary promotion, but a leap. And the intervals are getting shorter and shorter. Doesn't this correspond to Geno's words, Grandpa, you will have such a day. Damn it, I tore Geno's crow's mouth when I went back. Maha panicked. By his side. Roy frowned, and after absorbing all his comprehension and energy, he exhaled and opened his voice, full of energy. He suddenly opened his eyes, his eyes were like lightning, two thunderbolts flashed from the depths of his blind eyes. Feel it carefully. I realized an unprecedented power. 
Old man, don't you care about the evening scene of White Beard? Actually, he had something to tell you before he died. Roy stared at Maha, who was almost numb, and smiled lightly. He said, He is a remnant of the old era, and there is no boat to carry him in the new era. I think this sentence is quite suitable for you, don't you think? What do you think? I think the old man doesn't want you to think. Stinky boy, stop pointing and scolding why. Maha's eyes twitched, and he pretended to be calm and said, Don't think that a little progress you have made will start to swell. It's not my grandpa who hit you. When you were your age, my great grandpa changed three times a day. Do you think I'm proud? Damn it, as long as you're happy. Roy gave Mahapa a thumbs up. No matter how dazzling Maha looked, he was sleepy with excuses, and slipped away with a touch of heel. It turns out that can't stay can also be transferred. Maha finally realized how Geno felt. The face behind Roy's back was dark and full of anxiety and unhappiness. Walk slowly and don't see you off, be careful if you fall. The old man is young, he can see the way. Maha snorted coldly and disappeared in an instant. Roy chuckled, ignored him, shifted his gaze to the panel. Name. Roy Zoldick. Bone age, 17. Physique. 80 right pointing arrow 110. Normal person 10. Speed. 94 right pointing arrow 120. Normal person 10. Strength. 120 right pointing arrow 190. Normal person 10. Air volume. 150 right pointing arrow 199. Normal person 10. Template character. Fujitora smiles. Current unlock progress. 30 right pointing arrow 40. Experience value. 10 right pointing arrow 0. All attributes have been greatly improved again, and they are undoubtedly much more refined than before. Especially strength and air, it is only one step away from transcendence to holiness. So here comes the question. How strong can the realm of ghosts and gods be? Roy's heart itch the obsessive compulsive disorder came up, and I really wanted to immediately increase the energy displayed as 199 to 200 for him. But the experience points accumulated in the past few days have been exhausted, and if you want to break the limit, you need to continue to add points. However, the left and right are still a bit short, let's pile it up with Lian Lian Dao. Just now, because the old man Maha was making trouble, I couldn't continue practicing halfway through the knife practice. Now I just picked it up again and insisted on completing the daily, Wan Ben Su Jen. Roy picked up the stick knife, left the study, and came to stand still in the small courtyard. Thanks to the 40% template, his strength at this moment has also increased to an astonishing 190, and the staff and knife are even lighter in his hand, as if nothing. A moment later, as the last knife fell, the panel prompt sound comes as scheduled. Get a little experience, Roy did not hesitate to add its value to the capacity. Look, intently, the column of gas remains motionless, and the displayed value is still 199, which is beyond Roy's expectations. Remarks. All gods are different, ghosts and gods are unpredictable. Experience points are required to become a saint, 10 points and a certain amount of insight and experience. Sure enough. Breaking the limit is not as simple as I thought. Just as 99.9% .9 is not one after all, 60 points pass, 59 points fail. The difference of one point is the difference between the sky and the earth, the difference is far. It seems that building a car behind closed doors is not enough. Even if the value is reached, it is useless if the mood cannot keep up. I, I don't want to be the weakest ghost. After receiving the prompt from the panel, Roy focused his attention on the words, perception, and, experience, and a hint of enlightenment arose in his heart. Life is not only to read thousands of books, but also to travel thousands of miles to know the size of the world, surpass oneself, and break the shackles. For example, Maha Zoldik, why is he so strong? In addition to his own outstanding talent, it is also related to the fact that he has lived for so many years, has seen too many landscapes, and experienced too many lives. So, it seems that I can't stay at home all the time. Roy glanced back at the calendar, tomorrow was the day of the signing session. Time to pack up and get going. Maruko, take a good look at the house. When you meet a thief, rush up and scratch him, don't be polite to him. The next day, the sky was bright. Roy fed Wanzi a cat stick, patted its cat's head, picked up his bag, picked up his stick knife, and locked the door of the courtyard. In fact, the door is not locked, and no one dares to break into the young master's house. That's not necessarily true. Roy looked at Zipo Nian expressionlessly. 
The oldest butler in the history of the Zoldic family seemed to have been waiting outside the door for a long time. He bowed to him and said, as ordered by the master, I will be responsible for protecting the young master during this trip. Silva. Do you think I'm someone who needs protection? Roy looked at Zi Po Nian silently with a stick and knife in his hand. I don't believe that the news that Wutong was defeated by him hasn't spread yet. But if it has already been spread, Silva will send Zi Po Nian to protect him. The deep meaning is intriguing. Master, you are still you, you haven't changed at all. Zi Po Nian avoided the important and looked Roy up and down. The other party was about to catch up with her in size, and his appearance became more delicate and tough, more and more like Silva. Only those blind eyes, the stubbornness revealed in them, have not changed since childhood, they are still so sharp. Zi Po Nian replied respectfully, The head of the family has an order, I have to come. If the young master dislikes it, you can call the owner and change someone. But it's a long journey, and there's still a long way to go from Kukulu Mountain to the city library. So, I don't think there is a better means of transportation for the young master than the old woman and me. No need. Roy glanced at Z Ponian lightly, then turned and walked down the mountain. What kind of person is Silva? After reading the original book, Roy can only describe him as ruthless and ruthless, never giving up until he achieves his goal. It's not that he hasn't been tender, but all the tenderness has been reserved for Kalua. As for the others, he doesn't care what other people think. Such a person who can throw a bullet to his father without hesitation. He said he wants to protect Roy. Even if Roy replaces Zippo Nian, there will be mistresses. Mistresses. Even mistresses will come and follow Roy in a steady stream. That being the case, what is the difference between changing and not changing? What's more, Zippo Nian was right. In the entire Zoldic family, there is no better vehicle than her. She herself is realized, and Nen is named, Yamato Nadashiko Seven Changes, which can realize various means of transportation. In the original book, it was realized as an airplane, which is quite magical. But the disadvantage is also obvious. Someone needs to consume Nen to manipulate and control her. She can't do, unmanned driving, by herself. Want him Roy to ride an old woman? Forget it. That perverted Yie fan can bear it. Roy doesn't have such strong tastes. Hurry up. Don't say I didn't warn you. There is only one bus to Davia every day. Yes, master. Z Ponian looked deeply at Roy's back and raised his heels to follow him. Kukulu Mountain is huge, but there is only one trail leading to the mountain gate. Not from Zoldike's family, who don't know this trail, strayed into the forest, and there is only one dead end. Or buried in the belly of wild beasts, or bitten to death by three hares, what's more unlucky? If you accidentally touch the giant dragon raised by Zoldike's family, you will die even worse. Roy followed the trail all the way down the hill and soon came to the courtyard. Connelia's figure was captured, he greeted each other with a smile. Canalia quickly bent down, bowed to him and said, Good morning, Master Roy. The little girl looked a little nervous, holding the cane tightly with both hands, not daring to raise her head. Seeing this, Roy seemed to understand something, glanced at Zi Po Nian behind him, hummed lightly, and walked straight past Canalia. It seems that the fact that he defeated Wutong with one palm has already spread wildly in the whole Zoldic family. It is impossible to go back to the past and chat with these servants and housekeepers as friends, it will only bring stress and burden to them. This is the so-called, can't the circles be hardwired? No wonder Kalua will be disappointed in this family. A sneer twitched at the corner of Roy's mouth, and his pace quickened, adding a cloud of gloom to his heart. Clinker. Does the young master know where Kalua has been these days? Kanalia, who had her head down, suddenly mustered up her courage, stopped him, looked at him cautiously and said, I haven't seen him for several days. Roy suddenly stopped, feeling as if a ray of light entered his heart, dispelling the haze, and his mood suddenly improved. Don't worry, he won't die. Zhanyan smiled at Kanalia, Roy blinked and said meaningfully. Maybe. Went out to hide from the debt. Kanalia breathed a sigh of relief secretly thinking that it was fine. Suddenly reacted. A. Eh? Avoid debt. Who dares to urge Master Kalua to repay the debt? Kanalia was stunned, and a big question mark appeared on her head visible to the naked eye. Roy saw it and laughed. Without saying much, he waved his hand, turned and walked towards the mountain gate. As for. The answer to the question. Far away, close at hand. No. What are you laughing at, Master? Canalia looked at Roy's back as he drifted away, confused. Zippo Nian walked past her, 
took a deep look at her, and remembered that the girl's name seemed to be Canalia. The pace then quickened, hanging behind Roy, all the way out of the courtyard, and came to the mountain gate of Zoldyke's house. Master, are you going down the mountain again to do some shopping? Gia Bugia, who was drinking tea at the gate of the mountain, saw Roy, and walked out of the security room with a big smile. Say hello to him as usual, as he was approaching, he noticed that Zipo Nyen was actually following behind Roy, the smile on his face disappeared immediately, he bowed solemnly to Roy, and silently stepped aside. Roy could see it clearly, after experiencing the Canalia incident, he was already prepared in his heart. She nodded lightly at him, quietly waiting for the bus to arrive. Actually, young master, there is no need to trouble yourself. I'm faster than a bus. Zippo Nyen was one body behind Roy, glanced at Jia Bujia, nodded towards him, and introduced himself to Roy. Roy pouted, pretending not to hear, and ignored her at all. Is the question a matter of speed? You can change, the key is I have to dare to ride too? Just imagine. Riding an airplane transformed from an old woman, to meet book friends. He was afraid that there was nothing wrong with the book friend, but he did. Unlucky. Seeing this, Zeponian had no choice but to give up without waiting for Roy to respond. Not long after, 10 o'clock in the morning. Woo. A loud whistle came from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain. The sightseeing bus between Kukulu Mountain and Davia, the capital of the Republic of Batokia, has arrived. Roy could even hear Coco Sauce's sweet laugh like a lark. Everyone, the famous family of the world's number one killer, the Zoldic family has arrived. Please follow the rules and don't try to enter Zoldic. Yes, if you break in without the permission of Zoldike's family, you will become dog food, Coco Sauce, am I right? Roy held a stick knife in his hand and looked at Keikelu with a smile. Coco Lulu followed the sound and screamed, Roy Sauce, in surprise. Stepping on the red high heeled shoes, it turned into a fragrant wind, and threw itself into Roy's arms, hugging him happily. Hiss, it's so big, so soft. It seems that the food with Coco Sauce is pretty good these days. Roy was hit head on and ate a big one. He buried his head and greedily took a sip of the girl's fragrance, and said with a smile, I haven't seen you for a few days, you seem to have grown stronger, Coco Sauce. K. Kelu froze, let go of Roy, and punched him with her upper hand. Sister, is that called fat? If you can talk, talk a little more. Yes, yes, my fault, I made a slip of the tongue. Roy readily apologized, smiled and chatted with K. Kelu, and got into the car with a stick knife. Behind him, Z. Ponian followed, quietly watching Roy and K. Kelu exchanging greetings, his eyes flashed. Suddenly, I realized that I seem to know too little about Master Roy. He seems to be different from all young masters. Zi Po Nian fell into deep thought. Staring blankly at Roy and K. Kelu talking and laughing, those who didn't know thought he was just an ordinary boy. But who would have thought that he was the young master of the world's number one killer family? Compared to ILMI, Kaluto, or even Kalua, Roy is simply too unqualified as a killer. But, Master Roy like this is far more pleasing to the eyes than Ilfans and Miji. Zi Po Nyen silently waited by Roy's side, her eyes gradually softened. She just watched the boys and girls chatting all the way from getting on the car to getting off at the end of the car, and finally came to the stop before she realized it. Follow Roy out of the car. See you next time Roy Chan. As the bus drove away, K. Kelu blew a kiss to Roy by the window. Roy reached out to grab it, clenched his fist and put it near his mouth, making Kokolu giggle. Very cute girl. Z Ponian said suddenly standing behind Roy. Roy turned his head and looked at her in surprise, then nodded lightly. Let's go. The man who came to pick us up has arrived. Where is it? Z Ponian knew that Roy was going to attend the signing session today. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been sent by Silva to protect him. She stretched her neck and looked around. There were all kinds of vehicles parked in the noisy station, but none of them had Jump's logo printed on them. So, people? Zeponian looked at Roy suspiciously. In the sky. Roy looked up at the blue sky. Zeponian was stunned for a moment, then raised his head and followed his gaze. The sky was as blue as washing, white clouds were white, and there was nothing. Not to mention people, there is not even a ghost. Could it be that Master Roy is making fun of her? Or implying that she transforms into an airplane? Drive him to the library? Zi Po Nian was about to move, mobilized her thoughts, and was about to transform, but suddenly heard a buzzing sound. That's the whistling sound of the propeller spinning and smashing the air to form wind pressure. 
It turns out that the special plane sent by the jump agency to pick up Roy has arrived. Zipo Nyen, put away your thoughts. I forgot to tell you, I'm airsick and can't take the plane. Zipo Nyen. Yes, sir. Embarrassed, he cancelled the transformation, followed Roy, and boarded the helicopter. As the gangway rose, Nanako Takahashi had been waiting in the cabin for a long time, and she stepped forward and bowed to Roy, Dao Sensei. SMI Marseille. The city library is already surrounded by enthusiastic book lovers. The car can't get in at all, so I changed to a plane temporarily, please forgive me. Roy smiled and waved his hands, it's okay, I don't get airsick. Thank you and your company for your concern. Zippo Nyen. Sure enough, he is old, his ears are hard of hearing, and he even misheard the young master's words. It's like this. It must be like this, right? The corners of Zeponian's eyes twitched, and he clearly felt a strong sense of disgust. That's good. Takahashi Nanako smiled sweetly, her body trembled slightly, and the thrower shook accordingly, revealing a proud career line. She really deserves to be an editor, she has a lot of tolerance, so she won't be pissed to death by scumbag cartoonists who dragged her back. Who is this? Takahashi Nanako exchanged pleasantries with Roy, and looked at Zeponian behind him. Oh. This is my assistant, you can call her Xiao Zi. Roy turned around and gave Zi Po Nian a look. Call her. Zi Po Nian took a step forward, and her burly body directly shrouded Takahashi Nanako in the shadow. Looking down at her, she stretched out her right hand and said, Hello. Oh my god, what a fierce assistant. Is she the one who usually helps Mr. Tian Wei draw the manuscripts? Takahashi Nanako swallowed her saliva, and tremblingly stretched out her hand to shake Zi Po Nian. Hello. Withdrawing his hand quickly, he came to Roy's side in a flash, and introduced to him the process and precautions of the entire signing session, today. Roy sat on the seat, with the cane and knife by his lap, listening carefully. Accompanied by the roar of the helicopter, headed for the signing session. Hey, there are a lot of people here. The venue of the signing session, the city library, is on the roof of a residential building next door. Ushered in three unexpected guests, Uvijin, Nobunaga, Shizuku. Stepping on the roof, Nobunaga is holding a knife, looking down. The dense crowd squeezed the library to the brim, and everyone who watched it was afraid that they would commit crimes. Haha, <laughs> that guy Tiano actually has so many readers. Tell me how much money he has to make. Uvijin stood beside Nobunaga with his hips on his hips, stood shoulder to shoulder with him, smacked his lips and said, Co-authoring won't rob him, it's more profitable than robbing a bank, right? It's possible. Nobunaga stroked his beard. The current banks don't store large amounts of cash. Didn't we never grab it? A few hundred million is enough. Then we have to tie him even more. Uvijin clenched his fists and grinned, revealing two rows of big teeth, and said excitedly, Nobunaga, Shizuku, you don't need to take action. I am enough alone. Ohm. It took about ten minutes for the helicopter to come over the city library. The gangway was lowered. Takahashi Nanako led Roy and Zeponian into the library through the internal passage. The Metropolitan Police Department knew that Teacher Tian Wei was going to hold a signing session today, and specially dispatched an action team to maintain order at the scene and protect the safety of Teacher Tian Wei. Dao Sensei doesn't have to worry about that. In other words, Dao Sensei, you are still famous. I was shocked to learn that so many people came. Takahashi Nanako flicked her beautiful single ponytail and glanced out of the window. The densely packed human heads could not be seen at a glance, it was a spectacle. Hee <laughs> hee, it's okay. Roy calmly let go of his knowledge and arrogance, and wrapped the entire library in. There are indeed a lot of people, but compared to some fan circle fans who chased stars in the previous life, it is really not enough. It was impossible to say that I was angry at the organizer, and asked, Are you looking down on my guy gay? Ms. Tianwei is being modest. Takahashi Nanako smiled sweetly and led the way. Roy is in the middle, and Z Ponian is closely behind Roy. A group of people soon came to the exhibition hall and met with the leaders of the organizer and some staff members of the jump agency. Welcome Mr. Tiano to the city library. The big banner has been pulled up and circled around the exhibition hall. The yellow line was also drawn up in the middle of the hall early, and the staff responsible for maintaining the scene were waiting in full force, waiting for the gate to open to welcome the raging crowd. Mr. Tianwei, please sit down. Takahashi Nanako helped Roy open the chair, and carefully glanced at Ziponian. Zipo Nyen said blankly, I don't want to sit, just stand. Eh? Is this really okay? 
Takahashi Nanako looked at Roy in embarrassment. Roy waved his hand. Don't worry about her. With a blind eye sweep, he clearly sensed Zeponian's nervousness. Too many people. After being the butler of Zoldyke's house for so many years, what scene has Zippo not seen? But looking at the scene today, she was really shocked. It's just an autograph session. Another special plane came to pick it up, and the Metropolitan Police Department dispatched an action team to maintain order on the scene. It's too much for Zippo Nyen. Perhaps. The master can't imagine that the young master's popularity outside will be so popular? Z Ponian suddenly understood why Roy wanted to stand on his own. With such huge popularity, he doesn't need the Zoldic family at all, he is a famous family by himself. Teacher Takahashi, I'm ready to start. Roy took a sip of water and moistened his throat. Nanako Takahashi nodded, and jogged to communicate with the staff at the scene. The library doors are open. The turbulent crowd rushed in with bursts of cheers. Ms. Tianwei, I am your loyal fan. Look at me, look at me. Don't squeeze the ones in front. You are a Gooba fan. Teacher Tianwei has been a 10 year fan, and here he is. Fart your mother. Why are you pretending to be an old man? I just watched Teacher Tianwei beat my mother's womb. Mad. This is a black fan. Gaige, look at me. Yes, smile, he 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 he. I got the first blood of Teacher Tianwei. Who wants a photo? I'll give you 100,000 nuns. First come, first served. Got it. This TM is a scalper. There are not many normal people who co author it. Silence. Silence. All line up for me. Come one by one. The action team dispatched by the Metropolitan Police Department and the staff of Jump Agency dispatched. The signing session is officially underway. Roy is busy answering readers' questions, signing autographs for readers, or taking photos with fans. On the side, Z Ponian stood behind him, dedicated to his duty, and examined every reader who came to meet Roy, and dared not let go of his vigilance. Suddenly, Roy suddenly stopped his hands and said, Cover your ears. Both Z Ponian and Takahashi Nanako were taken aback, but they haven't reacted yet. I heard a loud bang. The glass curtain wall of the exhibition hall was shattered by a punch, and a big hole was opened on the spot. Immediately afterwards, a presumptuous laugh came from outside. Ha ha. Dao, your grandpa Uvijin is here. Before the sound came, people arrived first. A ferocious bull rushed into the exhibition hall, took a deep breath, and opened his mouth to say, Drink. Strong sonic vibrations, the entire library seemed to shake, not to mention people. No. So dizzy. Damn it. My eardrums. Patong. 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 All the readers who came to participate in Roy's signing session, including the Metropolitan Police Department's action team maintaining order at the scene and the jumping staff, counted as one, and all fainted to the ground like dumplings. In an instant, the exhibition hall was emptied, leaving only Roy, Zeponian and Takahashi Nanako. Dao Sensei. I. I'm so dizzy. Nanako Takahashi was still late, and slumped from the chair weakly. Zipo Nyen didn't look at her, let go of her ears, took a step forward, and stood in front of Roy. At this time, without knowing what happened, she is not worthy of being called a living fossil in the servant world of the Zoldic family. Yo, Tianwei, I haven't caught you yet, but you stood up by yourself. Uvijin's gaze was like a torch, and he rushed to Zeponian's body with one stride. He wrapped his arms around her waist and rushed out of the exhibition hall. Today's mission, kidnapping Tianwei gets square root. Haha, <laughs> Nobunaga, Shizuku, mission accomplished. You can withdraw. Nobunaga and Shizuku looked over. Fool. You tied the wrong person, hey, ah? Uh? Uvijin slammed on the brakes and stopped, and suddenly felt a sharp wind coming from his ears. Hastily let go of Zipo Nyen and distanced herself from her. Zipo Nyen missed a punch, secretly said it was a pity, moved his wrist, and blocked Roy behind him with a serious face. Master, you go first. These people don't seem to be simple. Uvijin's roar and hug just now were so powerful and fast, it was not like an ordinary person. Of course, the other party is the notorious, a group of phantom mice. It's all street rats who can't get on the stage and only deserve to live in stinky gutters. There were cross veins on Roy's forehead, and his face was somber that he could drip water with a pinch. Almost didn't get pissed off. The signing session was messed up like this, not to mention it was ruined, how much money would it cost? That's all his hard earned money, Roy. Hey, old man, he called you a mouse. Huh? You call NM. I told you, I'm only one year older than you. 
Nobunaga stepped up to Uvijin, punched him with his upper hand and cursed. You fool who can make mistakes. Stop embarrassing yourself here. Shizuku nodded approvingly. Yeah. Uvijin looked embarrassed, and took a hard punch from Nobunaga, and said with a ha ha smile. Well, who knew that guy Tianwei would be blind? His grandma, blind people can draw manga now, it's f asterisk king outrageous. Uvijin shouted at Roy. Hey, Tianwei, if you call me a mouse, I can't pretend I didn't hear it. Did you take the initiative to go with us, or do you want me to beat you up before taking you away? Tisk. Wow. Roy knew he was being targeted. Standing up slowly, he picked up the staff knife resting beside his legs, tapped and tapped, and came to Zipo Nian's side. The stick knife in his hand hit the ground with a pestle, and there was a muffled, boom. The pair of pale and colorless blind eyes turned and turned, reflected in the pupils of Uvijin, Nobunaga, and Shizuku, making people feel hair-raising. Actually, I think I still have a third option, and that is. Kidnage you, in exchange for ransom. Roy said calmly, as if he was talking about something trivial. Now, call your team leader and I'll tell you the number, one billion. One dime less, I'll break one of your legs. Master. Z Ponian frowned, leaning towards Roy quietly. If something goes wrong, be prepared to take him for a walk immediately. Huh. Ha ha ha. Did I hear the F asterisk K right? Uvijin and Nobunaga exchanged glances, both of them were taken aback. Even Shizuku who was naturally dumbfounded, was dumbfounded after hearing Roy's words, and looked at him strangely, as if looking at an idiot. The fake Li Gui met the real Li Kui. This is, are you a phantom troop, or are we phantom troop? Uvijin snapped his fingers and said excitedly, this is the first time I've seen the guy who kidnapped and tied my head. Don't mention it, it's really fresh. That's right, I'm sure, you are Tianwei. After all, Uvijin took a step forward and burst out his anger. He grinned grinningly and said, 1v1 men's battle, Tian Wei, if you want to kidnap Lao Su, just give it a try. Seeing that the situation was not right, Zipo Nian pulled her old face and was about to step forward. With a sound of clang, a shining samurai sword blocked her way. The point of the knife pointed straight at the tip of her nose, but it was Nobunaga. Don't move. Nobunaga stared at Zipo Nian with his dead fish eyes hanging. Zipo Nian paused glanced down at the samurai sword that was close at hand, and then glanced at the little girl standing behind the two of them ready to strike. The secret channel is in trouble. Two fists are hard to beat with four hands. Before you can find out the opponent's nen, aggressiveness will only show the opponent's flaws. So, young master, maybe I can really only look at you. The one-stroke defeat of Wutong is still vivid in my memory. Ponian finally looked at Roy. Roy didn't say a word, just stretched out his hand, and drew out his stick knife. Stepping forward, facing Uvijin's ferocious gaze, he walked up. When you are old, you should rest more and avoid getting involved with young people. Zipo Nian lowered his head and said respectfully, yes. He took a step back and walked aside silently. Seeing this, Nobunaga sheathed his knife, nothing left. Uvijin and Roy against each other. There seems to be a storm gathering and colliding between the two. It's so depressing that people can't breathe. At this time, Uvijin suddenly grinned. Tano, I'm actually your fan. I like Garp in it the most. Men should solve problems with their fists. Hum. If Garp knew that he was worshipped by a piece of trash, he would most likely be pissed off. Roy smiled coldly and held a stick knife to draw a sword flower. I'll give you a word, the villain died from talking too much. So, who wants to hear you beeping here? Grandpa can't wait to break your leg and go for the ransom. I really thought that I came to the signing session for a show. Lord, it was because of the tens of millions I lost. Hoochie, a deep purple slash pierced the sky. Good time, jihahaha. Uvijin laughed wantonly and felt that the blood in his body was about to ignite. Power, status, reputation, women, money. What does it have to do with TM? What he desires is to fight, and his belief is to become stronger. A good opponent is rare. After Roy roared, he was safe and sound. He drew his sword and slashed, forming a slash. Undoubtedly learned to read, this is interesting. Kang. Arms crossed to protect his chest, facing the roaring slash, Uvijin could not avoid it, and shouted, get out. But listening to the harsh cutting sound of, Silala. When the slash hit Uvijin's arm, sparks appeared, and then Uvijin pushed it upwards forcefully. It hit the sky, and cut Liuyan with a poo. He's a knife guy. 
Nobunaga hugged his knife and squinted at Roy. The opponent's palm was thick, with thick calluses exposed. The moment he just drew the knife, his movements were swift and smooth, without any muddle. Old man, this is my prey, look again, I won't let you. Uvijan knows what shit Nobunaga is going to do as soon as the good friend lifts his ass. In Hunter's world, there are many swordsmen, but swordsmen who can use Nyen and have sharp sword skills are extremely rare. Nobunaga is one of the representatives, and now, there is one more, Roy. Dog. Be careful of being hacked to death with a knife, Nobunaga's eyes twitched. Distracted during the battle, do you FCK know how many heads you have? However, it is true that the knife just now is not enough to break Uvijan's defense. Uvijan is the most physically powerful existence in Phantom Troop. He himself is the Nen of Enhancer. Dare to pick up that Magnum, sniper bullet, on the temple, and press out the RPG with bare hands, it's not a joke. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't itch, Uvijan twisted his neck and showed Roy his big white teeth. Roy laughed. The first cut was just to test the feel, idiot. As he spoke, his blind eyes froze for a moment, he stabbed his chest, and said softly, arm. The jet black armed color came out domineeringly through the body, and rushed towards the stick knife along Roy's palm. It spreads along the blade to the back of the blade, passes through the blade, reaches the tip of the blade, and finally wraps the entire body of the blade, forming a black sword. From the moment the sword becomes black, it is no longer an ordinary sword, such as the black sword, Yi, or Kazuki Odin's favorite sword, Enma. Huh. Why is his knife black? Shizuku raised his glasses on the bridge of his nose, and looked at the stick knife in Roy's hand in surprise. The domineering armed color burning with thick black flames made her feel faintly uncomfortable. Aside, Nobunaga frowned. As a swordsman, he sees it more clearly than Shizuku. It's not that his sword has turned black. To be precise, he added a mind to the knife. Uvijan, be careful, it's best not to pick it up this time. Yeah. Uvijan closed his teeth, his face became serious for the first time. A fruit grower once said that enhancer people tend to have a simple mind which is manifested in their personality as carefree, impulsive, and easy to reckless. But this doesn't mean that Uvijan is stupid. The moment he saw the domineering armed color, Uvijan's heart suddenly became a warning sign. That was the reaction of the body one step ahead of his mind. Tengu-style swordsmanship, tooth protruding. The battlefield is not a place for you to laugh and play, but for you to die. Chat fart? It's just right, I want your leg. Roy held the knife handle with both hands, staggered his front and rear feet, leaned on his feet and belted his waist, and lunged forward. Boom. The floor tile was actually crushed by his foot, and the gravel splashed. Relying on this reaction force, he immediately turned into a black line, stabbing Uvijan's thigh in the blink of an eye. Get out of the way. Nobunaga yelled. Uvijan's pupils shrank suddenly, and the tip of the knife struck in an instant, vowing to make a hole in his leg. He didn't care about thinking. Relying on years of combat experience, he turned sideways. Roy brushed past him and took a piece of his thigh. Collect some interest first. Then Roy flipped his wrist, and flicked the stick knife, blood slid across the blade, tick, tick. Drops fell to the ground, splashing bloody flowers. Huh. The pain hit, Uvijan didn't even frown, he lowered his head and glanced at the thigh where a piece of meat had been picked out, but his eyes suddenly widened. Are you a nemesis? He looked at Roy in surprise. After the words fell, Nobunaga and Shizuku, who were sweating, looked sideways. Just heard Uvijan Urn say, Your knife is not enough to break my defense. It's not so much cutting off a piece of my flesh, it's better to say cutting off my thoughts. The reason why the enhancer's physical fitness is strong enough is to strengthen his body with thoughts, which is similar to attaching a layer of armed domineering to the surface of the body. So if you want to break it, you must use a stronger armed color domineering to obliterate him. This requires consideration of the amount of chi on both sides. And when it comes to the amount of chi, Roy is only one step away from transcending the ordinary and entering the realm of ghosts and gods. Things are not right. If the other party is really a nemesis master, Nyen will become Uvijan's bondage instead. Nobunaga subconsciously grasped the handle of the knife, feeling a faint sense of uneasiness in his heart. Fortunately, Uvijan reacted quickly enough, otherwise the opponent's knife just now would not have been as simple as cutting off a piece of meat. So. Going to help? Shizuku asked. Nobunaga glanced at Zipo Nyen, who was on the side, and slowly shook his head. Let's see. 
Although the nemesis master is a legendary profession and is extremely rare, it does not mean that he is invincible. Combining Uvijin's combat experience with his understanding and use of Nian ability, it is not so easy for the opponent to defeat him. On the side, Zippo Nian sensed Nobunaga's gaze, and while secretly raising his vigilance, calmly pushed the glasses on the bridge of the nose. The glasses flickered electronically, it was a monitor, and the terminal led to the Zoldic family castle, the bedroom of the owner Silva. At this time, in the huge bedroom, the fireplace was still burning during the dog days. The flames danced and made crackling noises, which seemed to be unable to dispel the coldness in the room. On a cloud bed to the north, Silva Zoldic, the current head of the Zoldic family, propped his chin with one hand, and was concentrating on the screen on the wall. What was playing on the screen was not a cartoon, but a picture of Roy chopping off a piece of Uvagen's thigh with a knife. Sharp swordsmanship, good readability, this child gave me a pleasant surprise. Silva's thick eyebrows and big eyes were shining with light. After witnessing the knife just now, his eyes paused on Roy's stick knife, and he turned his head to the door. Squeak, the door was pushed open. Gia Nuo with his hands behind his back, she she ran in. The little old man didn't go to Roy's small courtyard these days, let alone, he didn't see the child, didn't hear the child's name, and hid in the small building to form a unified system, which was quite clean. From time to time, I am walking an eagle to tease the dragon, and I feel more comfortable and happy. It's no longer heard that Silva came back from a mission, so Geno planned to come over to check, first to ask how the mission was going, and second, to miss his son. Especially after comparing with a certain grandson who was so angry that he didn't pay for his life, the status of his son Silva rose infinitely in Geno's heart. Go to TM's intergenerational relatives, raising children is the only way to prevent old age. Geno walked in with a smile. Silva, what are you looking at? The old man looked a little enthusiastic today. Silva glanced at Geno. I'm looking at Roy. Huh. Who? Roy. Cough, I suddenly remembered. I still have something to do, I'll get busy first. Damn. Dot how did I hear that name again? Paji, the good mood that had been adjusted for a few days was gone in an instant. Geno turned away with a dark face. The rapid change made Silva dumbfounded. Father, why bother to get angry with a child? Anyway, he is your grandson after all. People drift in the rivers and lakes, and they never forget their home. Silva also heard about the unpleasant incident between her father and son. I didn't take it to heart at first, but seeing Geno's attitude, this unpleasant is really a big deal. Who said I was angry with him? Gia Nuo said angrily. This old man treats him as a grandson, and people don't see me as a grandfather in their eyes. Yeah. Silva said with a half smile. That's right, he's in trouble. I might die. Uh. You said this, the old man is excited. Jenner stopped, turned back, looked up at the screen, and lingered on Uvijin. Nobunaga, and Shizuku for a while, looking familiar. These little guys are, spiders, it's them. Silva nodded. The one fighting Roy is called Uvijin. The one with the knife is Nobunaga, and the little girl next to her, all of them are class of criminals. And a level. Father, you understand. Only criminals who have repeatedly committed heinous crimes around the world and are designated as high risk in the blacklist can be classified as class of criminals. Even professional hunters have a hard time apprehending them. Roy had the misfortune to meet San, which was really unlucky. That's not necessarily the case. Geno squinted at Roy in the picture. The brat hasn't seen him for a few days, but he still looks so hateful. But say you will die? Silva, you're still too young. It's not certain who will win the deer. Oh. Silva was a little surprised, looked at Geno in surprise and said, Father is so optimistic about Roy. Am I being optimistic? Is that what I call stating the facts? Although I really don't want to say it, you have never seen Roy's perverted acceleration at all. Geno stretched out a hand to pat Silva's shoulder and said, That's all I can tell you. Beat your son as early as possible. You may not be able to beat him in a few days. Silva. Dad, what you said is so scary. Silva grinned, not knowing what to say. Too exaggerated to beat Roy. It's okay to listen to this kind of nonsense. As for believing? Unless he got Silva's head kicked by a donkey. After Gianuo finished speaking earnestly, he saw Gianuo's disdainful expression of, Do you think I believe it? I had expected it. Said nothing, sighed lightly, moved a chair and sat down. How similar he was to Silva in the past, when Maha told him, he also looked like a ghost. Sure enough, surprise will transfer, right? Didn't you say you have something to do? 
Silva glanced at Geno. Oh, Geno said blankly, you heard wrong, Silva. I am so young that my ears are deaf, not as good as an old man like me. Geno squinted at the screen, and said leisurely, don't pay attention to these small details, the little spider you mentioned called Uvagen moved. Not to mention, he's pretty smart, and knows what to do when facing Master Dian Yen. Oh. Silva turned to look. Uvagen, who was stabbed by Roy, didn't show the slightest sense of frustration on his face. On the contrary, the corners of his mouth floated up, and he became more and more excited. Gia ha ha ha. It doesn't matter how many little fishes and shrimps you kill. Tano, you have to be strong enough. Uvagen narrowed his eyes, and with a poof, he actually took the initiative to disperse his thoughts. Immediately, his demeanor changed, from a dominant and reckless man, to a little transparent, with flickering aura. Oh, you dog, you actually have a brain. Holding the knife, Nobunaga said happily, since facing the master of eliminating thoughts, Nyen, has become a bondage, so why don't you use Nyen at all, and the bondage will naturally disappear. Gone. But in this way, there is no mind to help strengthen the body. Isn't he more likely to be hacked? Shizuku tilted his head in confusion. She herself is a manifested nen, and her strength is all tied to the pop eyed fish. The position in Phantom Troop is to clean up the battlefield. In terms of combat experience and combat awareness, it is naturally inferior to a combat madman like Uvagen, and a fighting school like Nobunaga. Then the other party has to be able to cut it. Nobunaga sneered. If you can't cut it, no matter how fast the knife is, it's useless. A little mention to Shizuku, Nobunaga didn't say much, he looked intently at the field. After Uvagen took the initiative to disperse that reading, he immediately used, Ju. Entangling, absolutely, practicing, herring. Extremely, masters, recovery, concealment. Recovery, it can treat fatigue, eliminate anxiety, and remove negative states of the body. Concealment, is to tighten and isolate the chi and breath of the whole body, so that one's sense of existence becomes weaker. Facing master eliminator, wrapping, and, practicing, relying on, nian, are useless. Only by using, absolute, relying on recovery and concealment, and confronting him head on, can we have a chance to defeat him. In front of the electronic screen, Silva looked at Uvagen with appreciation and said. It's just that this kid is physically strong, and close combat is his forte. This trick is, absolutely, to maximize strengths and avoid weaknesses, and it is well done. It's good. But it's useless. Geno curled his lips. Um? Something is wrong with the old man, this is. Silva was taken aback, and turned his head to look at Geno. Don't you dislike Roy? However, both forehand and backhand are facing him. Silva is smiling but not smiling. Geno was deeply hurt by his, I've seen through, eyes. Am I that way? Which eye of yours sees me? Only you can speak. Want to know the answer? I just don't tell you. Geno snorted coldly, without saying a word. Seeing this, Silva didn't take it seriously, and turned his gaze back to the screen, and saw. Uvagen shook his neck after performing the Jew, stomped on the ground fiercely, flew forward and punched Roy in the face. Tian Wei, I ate you. You also have a taste of what Lao Tzu's iron fist is like. Boom. Because the ground couldn't bear Uvagen's strength, he directly stepped on a large ring shaped pit. The gravel splashed, and the smoke rose to cover Uvagen's figure, and he could only faintly hear the fist wind blowing in his ears. In the original book, after Gon inadvertently used, Ju, he could only dodge, but could not fight back. But Uvagen is very familiar with it, can not only maintain the absolute, but also take the initiative to attack. It has to be said that in the use of Nen, Uvagen still overwhelmed the young Gon. But that doesn't seem like something to be proud of. There was a sneer on the corner of Roy's mouth, facing the fist that was hidden in the smoke and rushed towards his face. Stand still. Wait until Uvagen's fist is about to touch the tip of his nose. He suddenly opened his pair of blind eyes, swung the stick and knife in his hand, and slashed furiously. As black as ink, the ten meter long slash came first, found Uvagen's fist, and slashed at it with a whistling sound. Uvagen's pupils shrank, but he didn't expect to use Ju, which eliminated his own sense of existence, and was able to be caught by Roy. Startled at the moment, he forcibly twisted his body in midair, put away his fists, and narrowly avoided Roy's knife. Puff. The sound of a knife piercing the tofu sounded. The slash flew out against the tip of Uvagen's nose, taking a lock of his hair, before sinking into the building behind him, cutting off a corner of it. Uvagen doesn't have eyes behind his back, but just listening to his voice, 
he can tell how sharp Roy's sword is wrapped in armed color and domineering. Ju is not omnipotent. In the state of Ju, the user can't use Nen to protect his body at all, so the defense power becomes a decoration. Once hit by the knife, he must be seriously injured. Especially Tian Wei, this guy's knives feel faster than the old ones. The most important thing is, he has already used Ju to eliminate his own sense of existence, but Roy can still capture his position. Which means, he has mastered the circle. This blind man. Nobunaga and Uvijin looked at each other with a tacit understanding, realizing that there was trouble. Facts have proved that what they expected was right. Relying on the domineering perception of what they saw, Roy missed the first shot, and then struck again, and the stick knife suddenly swung. The light of the knife flickered, and dozens of slashes formed in an instant, as if a GPS guidance system was installed, it stared at Uvijin and flew over. Tang Haliu Swordsmanship, Continuous Slash. The most common combo will become extraordinary under the blessing of rapidity, not to mention that Roy's slash also has eyes. Okay, it's circle. Uvijin held his breath and did not dare to take big. Blocking his fastest speed, dodging and moving, his figure was extremely embarrassed by these dozens of slashes. His circle is very strong. Seeing this, Nobunaga put his hand on the handle of the knife, ready to move. He can also round, no one can get close to him within four meters. But compared to Roy, the opponent's slash from the air, look, the range is much larger than him. Withered Mountain. Father, you already knew that, didn't you? Silva glanced calmly at Geno beside him. Gia Nuo looked as if he had expected it long ago, but he was secretly taken aback in his heart. I haven't seen you for a few days, Yuan seems to have changed again. When I saw it for the first time, it seemed to be only more than 400 meters. How do you look at it now? Dot you are going to run 600 meters. That's right. After further unlocking the Fujitora template, Roy's knowledgeable domineering ushered in an expansion again. With a radius of 600 meters, even the wind and grass could not escape his perception. That's right, there's progress. Geno twirled his beard and made a pertinent comment. Silva was deeply convinced and praised Roy rarely. It's really good, just look at round, you are better than your father. Geno. You know, strong, you will die if you don't bring the second half of the sentence, right? Gino glanced at Silva. Silva was indifferent, and then changed his voice and said, but if the other party has the consciousness of exchanging injuries for injuries, they will be tough on the front. Even if the circle can catch the opponent's attack, it can't prevent the opponent from exploding. Not to mention, the opposite is the most powerful spider. Getting punched by him is even more outrageous than being hit by a missile. The Zoldic family can be famous all over the world as the world's number one killer family, except for their own strength. Another point is the powerful intelligence capability. As long as the Zoldic family wants to know about any powerful person in the world, whether he is a criminal or a hunter, they can get first-hand information about them. Phantom Troop is no exception. Then we'll wait and see. Geno said quietly, based on my understanding of that kid. He's going to lose his patience very quickly, and the fight won't be long, it'll be over. Silva frowned, he had heard about Roy defeating Wutong with one move, but to end the battle quickly. In the case that there is no huge difference in strength. Silva pondered. I still think there are some beatings. Then just wait and see. Geno closed his eyelids, and he didn't speak at all. And on the screen at this time, Uvijin was so annoyed by Roy's slash, he yelled, it's so annoying. He simply cancelled the circle, and didn't dodge anymore. He forced Roy twice, and a dodge narrowed the distance between him and Roy, and he smashed it with a raised fist. Super Destruction Punch. The big fist, entwined with powerful thoughts, is breathtaking. In the original book, Uvijin killed the earthworm, among the ten yin beasts with this punch that was comparable to a missile. Even if the opponent got into the ground by relying on his ability, he couldn't escape, and turned into fly ash on the spot. It shows the horror of this punch. 